How's everybody doing today? Awesome! Good boy, John. Lead him into it. If it wasn't for you, nobody would be excited around here. Well, good to see everybody. We're getting some much needed rain. It probably messed up some of our plans, but you know what? We need that living water. It's awesome to, to see the rain. Well, we welcome everybody. We've got a lot of new faces this morning. And and I need the Destiny family to make them feel welcome this morning and get to know who they are before they leave. I'm going to do some announcements here this morning. We've got a bunch of them. Pat's having a tad bit of trouble with the computer. It says freeze up there. It's 85 out. It ought to warm up. <laughs> we need somebody to organize a fair float this year. Uh, Karen's done it in the past, and she likes somebody else to get the blessing. We're getting big enough and, and diverse enough that we need somebody to step up and do that. Um, this whole corner back in here almost is almost a product of the fair parade and, and different things. Uh, we got to know them through passing out water bottles and all kinds of different things. And uh, that thing is really productive. We have a God presence in that, that uh, parade that, that uh, very few other people have. And it's really neat to be able to touch our community that way. And we can see the fruit of it over here. So if you, you feel in your heart you have that, that, uh, that desire, the skill to, to put a parade together or the float, uh, we'll help you. All of us will pitch in and do it. But we would like somebody else's input. Uh, Kyle, do you remember the the parade? I forget what the motto was. They just texted or emailed me the other day. Or the, um, my fair, our yeah. fair. My fair. I think it's my fair. I think it's my fair. So that opens it up to all kinds of different things. We have money in that account. Yeah, we've got money in the account. So we can do, we want a really nice float. So step up somebody and do that thing. I'd like to have a... a Wiener roast and a s'more uh, roast at the new complex over there. Do a bonfire and just roast weenies. And what we want to do is go around to all the community, hand out flyers, and get them to come to that wiener roast. And then we're going to have uh, uh, the guys with guitars. We're going to sit around and just sing some songs and have a good time and invite the community. There are so many people within a two and a half, three block radius of that building that's uh, really been paying attention and asking questions. And I thought, what a better uh, a deal to do than to have a wiener roast and s'mores and, and, uh, <coughs> in, a, in an unthreatening atmosphere and just let them come and have fun. So I need somebody to to kind of head that up too for me. And then Melissa's been working on Wisdom Meets Passion Week. It's going to be the first week in November. Uh, it's going to be seven nights, and we're going to have hopefully 100 people come from Destiny and invite 100 people. And by the end of those seven nights, we'll be able to touch 700 different people with the gospel and what's going on in our community. We've got awesome speakers that have already agreed to come. It's going to be a spiritual growth time, a really neat time in the Lord, and we're going to, we're hoping to have that, that building done enough with the restrooms and the, everything that we can have that uh, event there and kick off the new church. Our uh, journey of hope emailed me this week and it was kind of a fitting time uh, we've had so many people in this congregation dealing with cancer and this organization has got a big seminar that's already full in Oklahoma but they come around and teach churches and leadership and how to minister to cancer victims and I really have had this burden on my heart for, for the last year. Uh, when I, Zach's there behind, give careful thought to your ways. That came to me, and one of them is how we eat and what we take into our bodies, how we treat this temple of the Lord. Cancer is serious. 
It said that this year there's going to be almost 2 million people that will contract cancer. New people. And close to 900,000 of that 2 million will die. I think it was like um, one, one person in the size of uh, this church will get cancer in this church this year. And we just was dealing um, with Kevin's wife, Tara, this week. I've had her on the prayer chain, and we've all been praying for her. And, and uh, Kevin and Lexi are here today. Tara's doing good, thanks to the prayer. But it's touching us. And we have to be able to minister to people that are going to go through this. There are a lot of you in here that have dealt with cancer already and or are dealing with it. So I'd like to have you come up and express some interest to me if you're interested in that. And we'll get that group to come and teach us and train us on how to go to the hospitals, nursing homes, and in our own congregation to minister to people. And then I've got to ask for forgiveness and ask for your help. I lost the graduation names for the Bibles. Y'all gave them to me last week, and I stuffed them in my shirt pocket, and that's a bad thing to do. I'm not sure if my wife run through the washer or where they are. I haven't found them yet. So I really, really need your help. Give me the names again of the grads so we can get those Bibles engraved. I am so sorry, but I did it. Kim Jones is starting a special needs ministry. They had their meeting. That thing went awesome. If any of you in here are willing to take CPR training and work with special needs uh, uh, kids, we would love to have you be a part of that ministry. It's going really good so far. I got an email this morning. I checked my emails, and uh, the lady passed away that we built a ramp for. And they're wondering if we'll come and take that ramp out and, and bless somebody else with it. So I'll get on that email one of these days soon, and we'll set up a time to go remove that ramp so we can bless somebody else. There are papers in the back of the chairs, and it's for info. Your email addresses, your telephone numbers, and... Your anniversaries and birthdays. We want to be able to send you an anniversary card and a birthday card. And that reminds me of something. Also, there's a snack sheet on the refrigerator back there. Two or three of you sign up on a Sunday on there and bring cookies and donuts and stuff in. And it helps the ministry there. What it reminded me of, where's Luke? Luke McHugh, where are you at? Raise your hand up higher. We got a tradition here at uh, Destiny. When it's your birthday, we sing happy birthday. And when we sing happy birthday, we all always at the end say God's blessing to you. So we're going to sing happy birthday. Michelle, I need somebody that can get in tune to start us up. Happy birthday to you. Spirit. 
and we're to worship from that standpoint, from that spirit. We all know Jesus Christ is truth, don't we? Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And we're to worship in truth. And when we worship in truth, we're worshiping in what Jesus Christ paid for on that cross and blessed us with. We're to worship in spirit and truth. And the only way we can worship that way is to have Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior in our hearts. Has God done anything good for us this week? Anything at all? He sure has because you're breathing right now. You can't even take a breath on your own. God is so good. And they've got really good worship for us this morning. And as, as we worship, I want you to lay everything at Jesus' feet this morning. Tara and I had a talk before she went into surgery. She said, Pastor Mike, I've come to really realize deep in my heart there are things that we cannot do on our own. And I there. We all need the Spirit of God. We all need Jesus' healing power. We all need Jesus. And if we can confess with our hearts, or confess with our mouth, and believe in our hearts that Jesus Christ was dead, buried, and raised again, we shall be saved, Scripture says. There aren't a bunch of hoops we have to jump through, a bunch of things we have to do. There's no work that we can do that's great enough to reconnect us to God the Father Almighty. It's all because of the grace of God through His Son, Jesus Christ, and the cross. So if you're troubled, if you're heavy burdened this morning, if you're afraid, if there are things that you don't know, if you're seeking wisdom... I want you to cry out to the Lord in worship this morning. And I promise you, He will answer you. So let's, let's just stand this morning and worship with the team. And just let Jesus fill us from the top down, from the inside out, as we worship Him.
You're the righteousness of Christ. You're the sons and daughters of the living God Almighty. And I want you to live there. I want you to hold your head up high and be the light in a dark place. Satan loves you trampled in the ground like a rose. He loved it when Jesus was trampled in the ground like a rose. But boy, did he raise up above all and pay the price. We're overcomers. I want us to grab a hold of that this morning. I'm going to have them sing that one more time. And I want you, if you're here and feeling just downtrodden and beat up this morning, to listen to the words of that song and know that Jesus Christ will never leave nor forsake you and nothing will never get so bad for you that he won't get you through. Let's sing that one more time, guys.